Uh, Wendy, are you with us? Wendy was having technical difficulties, so she's going to be here in a little bit. There's two Wendy's. Am I here? You can hear you. Yes. Okay, finally. Sorry, people. Okay. Well, you're just like Linda. We can't see you either. No, I, I was glad to just get the audio on so I could hear you all. So I apologize for that. Okay. Uh, is Phoebe with us? Phoebe was going to join us. There. Oh, there you are. Ta -da. Uh, Wendy, maybe you'd like to introduce Phoebe to the rest of the commission? I would love to. Um, everyone, Phoebe Ward is our um, Minnesota lead, uh, lead Minnesota fellow. She'll be with the city for, I believe, two years. Correct, Phoebe? She's gonna until, be doing, I'll let her explain what she's going to be doing with us. I'm, I'm here until July 2022. Um, and I'm, work, I'm helping work on the rollout of the Our Town and the Local Foods Local Places plan. So Wendy was very kind and invited me to sit in on this meeting because she thought it might be kind of a, a relevance to some of that work. And she also loves writing grants and loves all things older. All right. <laughs> she likes all that. Boy, she likes boy, all of when she perked up. <laughs> I should clarify that just a little bit. <laughs> That won't be in the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Buildings. I like old buildings. <laughs> old buildings. <laughs> well, welcome, Phoebe. Uh, glad to have you with our meeting today. And hopefully you'll be with us in other meetings. That would be, I'd, if you don't mind me sitting in. Thank good, you. Good, good, good. Uh, everybody had a chance to read uh, Deb's minutes? Well, the, these were Wendy's minutes, weren't they? Wendy's minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything, everything okay? Looked good to me. I move we approve. I'll second. Neil? Yes. And Wayne? Yep. Okay, Wendy, go do your thing. Gary? Yes. And Ashley is absent. Wayne? Yes. Linda? Yes. Don? Yes. Pat? Yes. And Camille? Yes. Is Peter able to join us? I see he's got his mute oh. button on. Peter, are you with us? I am. Hello. Wonderful. Hi. Sorry, oh, I'm uh, there doing health is. stuff today also, so I'm I may be in and out a little bit. Good. Well, Peter is our new um, downtown business uh, representative, business owner. Maybe Peter, welcome uh, to the commission, and maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. Well, I'm Peter Grams. I'm uh, the third generation uh, uh, at the Melgram Jewelers downtown in Little Falls. I grew up in town and uh, I've been talking with Chris Vonberg for a few years about uh, maybe being a part of the commission and I'm excited to see what it's all about. Good. I'm kind of Peter newer. Of course, taking uh, Susie Persapio's uh, place. So welcome, Peter. Our fund balance, $16,942. Everything's up to date, Wendy? As of October 31st, yes. Very good. Let's uh, well, let's uh, tackle the old business number four. Uh, an update: Sonny Jeffords welcoming committee. Ashley's not with us. Everybody received a copy of uh, Ashley's letter that she wrote. Yes. 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 Yeah. Pretty understandable. I thought so. Yeah. Camille, anything you want to add? No, just it just uh, we're not. We're supporting that particular initiative, but it really didn't quite fit into what we had envisioned for our wayfinding and uh, signage. So we're gonna proceed with that, the same track we were on before. But we still, someone will still be attending. Yes, uh, yeah, Ashley and I'll take turns. Okay. Chris, something you'd like to offer on that? Um, it seemed like it was more, not more outside, but outside the historic district too. So to put it all on the HPC didn't really make sense as the umbrella. So the Visitors Bureau um, brought it forward. We talked about it at our board. And since it's 
all of the stuff that impacts attractions and history and um, what's the one I'm looking natural stuff so you got a lot of the river you got a lot of the what was industry before so it definitely needs HPC because that's where the information is going to come from but I think the partnership between everybody is nice so you have a visitors bureau a welcoming committee HPC knowledge Minnesota power city engineer it's it's a package deal so I think everybody should be able to see the project uh, transparent as it goes forward so continuing to share updates if updates happen hopefully soon good Chris thanks for you know taking this responsibility on. So, uh, site survey Gary and Wendy of course we have not updated uh, our site survey since about 1993 We've decided as a commission that it does need to be updated. Wendy, did you send the entire board the information you always sent me the last survey? I, I did, yes. I will have to nice. <laughs> I printed it all. <laughs> that was a very interesting yeah, reading. So. It is. It really is. I see some changes that need to be made. Uh, you know, paper mill isn't going to it anymore, and there's a few other things. Have you had a chance to talk to anybody? No, I'm sorry. I have not. I okay. had a council packet last week and sorry that had to go out. Yeah, I've, I've read this before uh, a few times and we do have a copy at the museum. And so it is, it's just really nice to refresh your, yeah. idea, you know, your history on what happened and how, how it happened and what we need to do to pick up, pick it up and take it further because right. definitely needs. And over the years, I'm sure uh -huh. there are things that need to be added to it. Uh -huh. um, it was interesting to see the list of that Michael Coop sent out uh -huh. of possible folks that do that kind of work. Um, that Greg Gout that is on there just finished for Linden Hill, the uh, redoing our um, national, what is it, national registry. Um, and he did a really good job, but I feel these folks did an excellent job too. So yeah, if we can use them again, I wouldn't be against that. Don, I know you feel strongly about Gemini too and Sue Granger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, she did a very good job. And I was thinking if uh, she could, she knows, she did it once, it'll be easier for her to, I believe, review. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, just going over, and she will know uh, the correction, uh, what corrections to make, and she's familiar with the town. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's the only reason I suggested her. Yeah. So well, she won't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, she won't have to relearn things and all of that. Um, I, I was pretty impressed with the way it was put together. Yeah, she did a, a very good job for us. I can. Uh, I, Lori was here, and I had just started when um, Sue was here. But I know that Sue and Richard spoke very highly of her. Um, I don't know. In looking at the city's requirements, we don't have to do an RFP, but um, maybe we want to get a sense of what she would be charging and how much staff time. Because I know last time she was here, that um, Lori had stated that both her and Susan Haugen had put in a lot of hours with her as well. So it wasn't just her. So they were helping with the costs. So that might be a determining factor too. I don't know, but I certainly can contact her if that's who the HPC wishes to um, contact. Well, I think she would have had to have a lot of contact the first go round because there's so much to gather, you know, so many places to gather from it. And looking at the list of folks that was, were on the HPC at that time, where I can see a ton of folks that really could help her with that. Um, I know when Greg redid ours, it took a lot of our staff time um, to, to also help him. However, now that that Laura Jane had done the original one, so it was like two pages compared to 40 when he got done. Um, She's already got the basis down. And I think that funding, we funded it through the legacy grants. So, you know, I don't know if our cities, our cities available to 
for legacy grants? Yes. Yes. But Michael also indicated that we could do a CLG grant when okay. he um, spoke yeah, he, with Michael. He highly Very encouraged good. it. He encouraged that. Good, good, good. So he feels confident we would be able to get some funds for that. Right. When did you think it would take less staff time because of all the work that has been done already? I'm hopeful that that would be the case. I, I think it would be. Um, but I certainly can get an idea from her if you'd like me to contact her. Good. And then you'll have something by the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Another useful tool that I think it provided was all of the the homes that were listed. Yeah. The Century Home, you know, we, we might, I know we put the ads in the paper requesting people to put their homes up, but if we looked through that list and maybe picked out a few, you know, that and address those people directly, mm -hmm. that we might get uh, better results and be ready to, you know, help those people with their home history. That's a good idea. Sure. And we've also used Hoisington before and Thomas on. So it gives you a different perspective. You've got fresh eyes looking as opposed to people that have done other projects for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know Zahn was, a, Zahn was a problem though, right? Zahn? Yeah, well, I, I don't think, uh, I was not entirely happy uh, with everything that he had done at the, for the last project. Uh, I think uh, I would not, if it were up to me, I would not be looking to him to do anything. I'd look for somebody else then. Any other discussion? It might be a good idea to, to kind of update Peter on just exactly what you know, you, you did mention about uh, the fact that we hadn't done this for a while, but I, Peter, did you get a chance to read the the uh, report, the original report from what, 1996? <laughs> what were some of the projects that came out of that after that report was done? I was wondering the same thing. I haven't read it yet because I first found that it was 118 pages this morning. <laughs> After I hit print. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> A little waste of paper. <laughs> yeah. Don, throughout there, it was mentioned that uh, there would be, you know, maybe projects because of this survey. What, do you remember if there was anything done? I wasn't around either, so. No, it's on what? After on that the, report was done. When that report was done, they had mentioned at times that maybe that something should be pursued or something more should be done about, uh, you know, a certain, certain structure or something like that. No, there was not, uh, there was nothing. All the uh, survey was done to see uh, what was contributing as far as uh, the commercial district I'm talking about now. Uh, the downtown area. Uh, all all that was done is uh, if they were contributing or non-contributing, and uh, the status of what they were at the time. It was basically an inventory kind of thing, and what we had to work with, and we were charged with at that time uh, bringing everything up uh, back to, let's say, if a building was in, built in 1923 you uh, restored it back to its original or as close as original uh, condition that it was at the time. And that's all we were charged with at that time. Okay. So we just were in the business of restoring uh, the facades. Now, what we are talking about now is uh, that for the downtown commercial uh, historic district, or are you planning on doing the residential district over again? I think it would, um, if we did, did this and we did, you know, a discussion on exactly where we might want to go, uh, since we're talking also about, you know, the wayfaring signage and the history of other parts of uh, the city, and maybe it using more than just the downtown 
maybe this should be what would it be more of a an exploration kind of a, a thing that we do as far as or we'd have to set something up with, uh, with if we did get like Jim and I would we have to set a direction for them before they came in about what we wanted to do. You we could do an estimate for commercial and if we could add get a second estimate cost for residential we might be able to figure out what we can afford. And I would think over all of those years won't more buildings qualify as historic now um, because now you've got how many more years added on to that. Camille, am I off base on that? I know when we I think so, yes, definitely. When we took that Tacoma um, conference, mm -hmm. that was one of the things they said they they had listed, um, and that's where this came from for me anyway, that we needed to have this survey no more than 10 years old to qualify for some of the future granting that was out there. Great, right, right. And also, uh, in Tacoma, they decided they they had started out a little too narrow, yeah. and yeah. so they, they wanted a, a survey of the whole you know area of the of their city rather than just the historic downtown Correct. or what was determined as the historic downtown. So. If we, I don't know, maybe Michael could lead us in some kind of a discussion on how to go about uh, kind of directing this, how, what it would look like in the next. When this was done, originally we did the uh, historic downtown commercial district first. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, uh, at a later time, there was interest from some of the residents to have their homes, they wanted to have their homes on the register. And so then at that point, that's when we did the residential uh, survey. Okay. And that was done in three parts because it cost so much money at the time. The uh, town was divided up in uh, three by three and we did three different surveys. So uh, like right now, I was assuming we were talking uh, the commercial uh, district to be redone. And then afterwards you can, if you wish, then you would be able to turn around and do residential. But what we had decided after that was over, not enough people were in, in agreement to make a, a residential historic district. So we kind of uh, dropped the idea of making the residential historic district. We stayed with the uh, downtown commercial. We figured that would be enough to keep the uh, commission busy. So. Uh, uh, do you, uh, if we talk, if we talk about inventory commercial or parks and recreation or some such, you know, uh, thing, there are a lot of areas that can have deep history in, in Little Falls, you know, like Hennepin Paper site. Some of the, you know, some of the other sites where uh, you mentioned, Donnie, you wanted to do um, kiosk that would talk about the the mills along uh, the river uh -huh. that really were you know and so that's that's a little bit beyond just the downtown historic district and i think it definitely it's something that is part of the, the real reason that the downtown district exists is the commercial um development, you know, that really kind of spurred that development on. I don't know, I, yeah, I guess, did you have a, like a committee of people that, that uh, sat down and kind of mapped this out? You said that there wasn't enough agreement on the, the uh, residential area that, what was the disagreements there? The area that they wanted to cover or what? No, there was no disagreement at all. Uh, mm -hmm. When the HPC got started, it was started with the intent of the downtown 
commercial district. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when we had the surveys all done and everything, then we just opted to do residential because some people that lived in some of the resident, uh, residential area mm -hmm. thought they liked it. And then when we would uh, have meetings with some of them, call them in for a meeting or something, uh, you know, in an evening, then they start finding out that there's more, if you're in the residential historic district, you got rules to follow. And it would become a uh, regulation thing at that time. Uh, it was decided, okay, if you pick the, so many uh, square block area, like you have the downtown, the person living across the street would not have to follow all the rules and regulations as the person, uh, as you do, so then there could be a conflict. So that's when we started looking into the century home thing where there's no requirement and it was more of an honorary uh, recognition and there was no ties to anybody. And at the time that was uh, decided that's the way we're gonna go. So, and ideas like anything can change. Yeah. Yeah, I think what one of the Hi. Hi. one of the conferences that we Pat and I oh. watched on <laughs> whatever it talked about I am on, the rules I'm on and the regulations that I'm on fall on in those particular areas that are, that okay. are um, make it a little more difficult that you have to have um, uh, a, because of the dollars that then are available to those people to fix up their their homes, they have to do the according to you know the regulations and the codes. I can see where that is a does become a bit of a a problem to get enough people in a particular block or an area to agree that that particular area would fall into that category would be. He's like me. We only like you. Tough. <laughs> Okay, It'd be thanks. fun if you're the only right. house in the block, but I don't think things, Donnie, have changed in 26 years. I think there would be some resistance to that now. It's mm -hmm. a good idea, but I think there would be a lot of resistance from the residential area. Mm -hmm. My thoughts? Though there is a possibility that, of course, <laughs> if the, uh, the economy does, swings around later on, that we as a HPC could do much of the same thing that you would that you're doing for the downtown district with uh, dollars for upgrades to facades, you know. Um, I think the city does a do you do a program for um, energy efficiencies and things like that, and for you don't you haven't done that. I know I know a number of cities do, but. We had a contract when I first started with Pepper Jensen. Um, it was a, some type of program that mm -hmm. was energy, but that st stalled shortly after I started in 92, 93. But no, the city doesn't have any programs for that type of thing. Um, I know the EDA does some funding for um, roof repair or um, furnaces, that type of thing, but. Mm -hmm. So my thought is, let's have Wendy, you know, talk to Gemini and see, let's get some kind of prices and kind of move on from there. How does that sound? So in my understanding, you're only wanting me to check with Gemini. Just so I have something, um, if I could get a motion, um, that way we're all covered. If I, the council asks why, I can say um, due to past practices that we've dealt with them. I'm sure they won't have a problem, but I would like to have some type of motion and, and on it. Then if you would ask her also, Wendy, or whoever you talk to, if it would mean less staff time because they would be taking on the project again. Absolutely. That might be a selling point to the council also. And are we, are, we're just talking, if I understand correctly, the com downtown commercial district, correct? Uh, I think we need to talk about just a little bit more than just that. I mean, uh, at this time, can yeah. we say? 
um, with the possibility of extending it into residential in the future? In the future, okay. yeah. But presently, you, it's just the downtown historic district. Yep, with thoughts of the residential in the future. Okay. okay. And, and basically, if we do talk commercial, I would like to include things like the Hennepin paper and Bill. things that don't exist any, any longer, but they de do nef need to be uh, kept in our history and they are valuable. I agree. Good. So it's more than just, and maybe it's a matter of, okay, maybe we extend that, what was just the downtown area, maybe that gets extended to encompass more of the commercial area. Um, another part of the, the big, the deep history of um, Little Falls was uh, Broadway on West Broadway. I mean, that was residential and residents, I mean, uh, restaurants, hotels, uh, businesses that have disappeared. <laughs> and, the, and the most latest, you know, was of course the, the West Side Bar. Mm -hmm. Maybe once I get an idea from her, if mm -hmm. the, the group decides to go with her, that we can get her in here and we can have this yeah. Um, yeah. Deep, more detailed yeah. discussion. That would, be great. Idea. that would be really great. hard to, for her to get an idea from me saying this and then we go out this. Maybe if we get a general idea and you all are on, we all agree on it, then we can have her come to a meeting. Sounds good. Would that, somebody like to make a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion to uh, start conversation with Gemini Research about um, our historic preservation review upgrade. Anybody want to second that? I'll second it. Yeah. Any discussion? Any more discussion on this? Wendy? Gary? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Linda? Yes. Don? Yes. Pat? Yes. Camille? Yes. Yep. Are we under the 40 minute time constraint today? We are not. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Timekeeper. <laughs> uh, the camp grant program, uh, the update that I have is it, the uh, National Alliance of Preservation Committee, they have scheduled the program for January 28th and 29th. Obviously, it will be in Zoom. Uh, some of the folks in charge here cannot come up with a date when they all can meet at the same time. And that's kind of where it is right now as far as a, a, a pre-meeting to discuss uh, what's going to be happening and everything else. But the dates of the program, uh, the camp program is January 28th and 29th. So by the next meeting in January, or if we receive anything uh, before that, Wendy will we'll make sure that you get copies of it. So that's where it's up right at right now. Wendy, you haven't heard anything more, have you? Nope. Okay. It's amazing when you get five or six people and nobody can agree on mm -hmm. when they can get together. So, okay, uh, we'll move on to new business. Uh, Greg, Elliot's tattoo. Okay. So what they. <laughs> So, so what they did was they re-shingled it, correct, Greg? That's correct. That's all they did? Correct. And it's, is it fine to do that, or do they need permission from the city because you have the facade easement? Technically, they would need at least a, a building permit for that, which would then have generated to go to, uh, to the HPC. Um, but at the very least, they would have needed a permit to do that. They did not pull one of those uh, to, to do that work. And so what's happened? So at this, at this point, nothing has happened, um, but we will likely have reach out to them and indicate that one, there's a facade easement, so it needs to go in front of the HPC, and two, they need to pull a, a, a permit for that work uh, in order to, to do that. So 
uh, we'll be reaching out to them to to get that process started. Very good. How do we avoid this in the future? You know, they're renting, their landlord is, well, Margaret is no longer involved, her son is, and her son mm -hmm. may not even know that there's an easement on the facade. Well, it really should have came down to when they pull the building permit for the, the, the shingling, that would have triggered it. Um, you know, you're right, the, the son probably didn't know that they had a facade easement, but it would have triggered us to bring it to the HPC. Um, and so that's where the disconnect was. They didn't pull a building permit for it, which obviously then did not get to the HPC. Okay. They didn't even ask about a building Correct. permit Correct. for the jingling. So Correct. we didn't know about, I mean, staff would have told them had they bothered to check. Correct. They did pull a permit for the sign, the sign. which you're aware of, um, right. but there was nothing in there that indicated they would do anything in terms of facade or, or roofing or, or anything else. So yeah, it's a little frustrating that they, they didn't, but so. Okay, so you, it, you'll deal with that on your end, right? Correct. Okay, other thoughts from the commission, anything? I don't know what we have to do to, to get in the loop of things um, here. that way. I, when when these folks rent from people, are they given the information? Oh, for God's sake. You know, probably I not. don't know. Probably not. But it's still up to the landlord to um, approve of any changes they made to the facade. So correct. You know, a renter can't just go ahead and change the front on his own. He he would right. have to go through his landlord, and then the landlord should know that. In this case, I can maybe understand why it didn't happen, but I know, how do we get into that loop, Pat? And I think ignorance of the law is no excuse. At what point do we stop saying, okay, it's okay, but next time, next time, next time, that gets old. And yeah. anybody that owns a building knows there's rules and regulations and do it right. right. If, if it was my building and I did that, believe me, Greg Kimmon would be here hollering at me. <laughs> right, Greg Kimmon? <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> Probably you know, bring a city council member with them too. Yeah, yeah you're probably. An, probably. You're, an ex, you're an exception, Linda. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's just ignorance is no excuse. If you're smart enough right. to know to own a building, you're smart enough to know you got to get a permit to do work. Everybody knows that. Right. I agree with you. No, no matter what town you're in. Yep. You got to have a permit and everybody knows that. Well, then let's move on to the next one. Sam's Western Wear. Uh, they have a huge sign up and they never came to uh, the city, I understand, or to HBC. What's going on with that, Greg? I'm actually going to let Darren kind of address that one. He knows that one a little sure. better than I do. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, there is a new sign that went up on that building at uh, 118 Broadway. Um, so when you came aware of that, there, there was no permit pulled for that. So a letter was sent out. Um, back on the 24th of November um, that gave them um, a deadline here at the end of this week. Um, I did indicate that there was a meeting happening today for the HPC. So if it was done for a, an application was submitted, um, they could get here timely. Um, but I said, as of right now, I have not seen anything. Um, if I don't receive anything by the end of the week, then we'll just follow up with another um, uh, letter indicating the issue to either take the sign down or get a permit for the sign. Who did again, the sign for them? Was it a local? They're a they're also a renter. Correct. Right. That's owned by the newest family, correct? Yes. Uh, correct. And the newest is are aware that it is in the district. Right, because there's been other other things going on with that building in the past yes. years. She uh, apparently in, in, talked to another one of our commission members and said she had gone to the city and a woman at the city told her she didn't need a permit. So I did call her, left her a message to call me and talk about it. She never did return a phone call to me, so. I did check with staff and no such call or conversation. Has and who does, who is Sam's Western Wear? Gary, Samantha. do you know? Samantha, uh, you remember Wendy? 
I don't, but uh, I can check. Wiseman, your... Wiseman, and I'm not sure how to spell that. It's like W, W E I, uh, S M A N I'll, something. I'll like go that. on Facebook and see if I can find the spelling. So. Okay. The letter did go out to the property owner, um, mm -hmm. so they received yep. that information. And that's and that's Al. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll, Darren, we'll, what happens we'll if we don't respond to you? Order? Excuse I'm me. sorry, Pat. Was that Pat? Excuse me. Both. The, I'm just looking for a clarification. Both the renter and the owner were notified. Owner. Uh, the owner was sent a letter. It sounds like the renter also is aware, though, afterwards, okay. probably. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So if they don't respond to you, Darren, what happens? Well, then uh, we can elevate the uh, enforcement, which can be a couple of ways, depending upon how we want to handle it. Uh, it can be city attorney involvement or um, you know, drafting another letter uh, is the usual step. But um, uh, Greg, do you have any other process besides this? Typically, the process is, I guess, a letter from the city attorney would be the next right. step. I mean, we could go. So the next step would be a letter. And then if that doesn't resolve anything, we could also go to administrative fines. If that doesn't get anything, then we could go to the attorney as far as um, legal action in regards to it. Normally, it is taken care of long before then, but I mean, there's there's a number of steps we can take to, to ensure compliance. Did we, do you find, find out who did the sign? Is it someone local or, I mean, I, I know before uh, we've dealt with, uh, was it Froggies and had to remind them that uh, those thing permits have to come to the HPC for downtown. Froggy has been quite good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would doubt if Froggy put that up. So it's and probably not him that did this. And we have not received no word back from them. So we don't know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't approved by us. They didn't apply for a permit. We have no idea. And I just hate being so negative for businesses. It's so good to see that business in there. It's actually a good looking sign. And, uh, but I just, once again, as, as Pat said, you know, we got to get in the loop someplace. Yeah, but Al should have known. I've uh, just, I don't understand. I guess it goes back to what Linda said too. So, anything the commission would like to add on this? Darren and Greg, if you could please keep me posted that I could um, forward the information on to the HPC so they keep updated. We will. We'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other business in front of the commission? Nothing whatsoever. I have a question. Good. How about um, New Century Home Guides where they're going to, are you thinking about updating them this year or getting more? What was the last on that one? They are in the process with this year's group. You weren't at that meeting, Chris. I know. I was probably furloughed. Yeah. It's okay. I'm, I'm going to have to remind you to read the minutes. <laughs> Where's my free veterans glasses? <laughs> Thank you for not using a hand gesture that we could see. <laughs> That's funny. I felt it though. <laughs> I said nothing, nor did I move. Okay, you're doing well. Any other, anything else? Yeah, on my agenda, if you all, I'm sure you all caught it, but January. 4th, 2021, not 20. Oh. December is my worst year with that. I apologize or month because I do council stuff for this year and I'm getting calendars ready for next year. So my apologies. It's your next meeting is January 4th, 2021. Yay, 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, since we have a council member present, what is the status on our increase in dollars that we asked for you thought were would that do that does that happen in the new year or i i think i think it looks good we've got a, a meeting tonight and we had talked over the budget last monday night and it looks good but i don't know when the final vote is is this week or if it's the 21st but 
it looks good. All right, good. Yep. Anything else? Thank you for all being here. Peter, thank you for joining the group. And we look forward to you, you know, being with us again every month. And anything you need to to add or, you know, comment or something, you can get a hold of me, get a hold of Wendy, get a hold of any one of the commission members. So more than happy to answer any questions you have. Motion to adjourn. I'll make one. Wayne? That, that was quick. <laughs> a second. Who did the second? I'm sorry. Camille. Camille. Wendy? Pat? Pat, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Everybody else, too. Everybody else, too. <laughs> did we lose? We lost Wendy. Nope, I'm here. She's here. Oh. Gary? Yes. Ashley's gone. Wayne? Yes. Linda? Yes. Don? Yes. Pat? Yes. And Camille? Yes. Thank you all so very much for all you do for the city. Thank Stay you, well. Wendy. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.